need Cam Sutton. How's that going? Uh, you know, we, we love, we think very highly of Cam and, you know, conversation, conversations uh, uh, have commenced and, you know, we'll see where it goes. Just like all our other free agents, you know, everything's on the table. You don't feel like he's a must sign and he has the leverage here? Uh, I mean, we have a few uh, guys that we, you know, obviously we would prioritize. prioritize uh, I'm not going to get into who's who, uh, but, um, you know, I feel good about where we're at. We do like Cam. Uh, Cam a great deal. Well, well, how is this uh, kind of off season for you? Uh, obviously, it is different. How different, and how how many different places have you gone? Oh, um, so, good question, Jerry. Uh, you know, I think because I had been here so long with Kev, I just the transition has been smooth. It, it doesn't really feel much different. Um, I've been obviously the Mobile. Uh, I was at the HBCU Combine uh, last week. Um, I went to some school visits during the season. Uh, I did not go to the Hula Bowl, no. It con there was a conflict there, no. So, Senior Bowl, uh, HB I was at the HBCU Combine. Obviously, I'm here and, you know, we'll be hitting the Pro Day circuit here soon. Omar, when you're at the Combine here, what realistically can, like, a GM or member of front office learn and what kind of information are you looking to gain from these experiences? Well, well, I can't speak for every GM, but I can tell you, for me, just the opportunity to get to know these guys a lot better uh, as people. You know, when you have the interviews and, and, you, and you get these guys one-on-one -on -one and just kind of get to know them and get a feel for who they are and, you know, ask them, uh, you know, just, just really getting to know them and to see if, uh, if they're uh, the type of player and person that we want as part of, the, of our organization. Omar, when you're talking to free agents, like outside free agents, when you're going to, uh, is it always been like Kevin would talk to them and then deal with you with the money? And is it make it easier where you can like condense that because you have the money calculations going on? So Ke Kevin and I, you know, I said this in my press conference, Kevin and I had a great relationship. I mean, we, we probably spent more time together than with our families and we talked, you know, daily, several times a day. So. Which is really a natural process. So when we get to the point where we are, we do have the opportunity to talk to the free agents. You know, I, th I think it'll just be natural. I mean, I understand that part of it, and just being around Kevin for so long, and you know, the other, the rest of it just. It's, but it's not like taking one part out and condensing no, it, and making no. it easier. No, it's just, 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 you know, it'll be just collected from everything. Omar, uh, I think Art deferred to you the other day about how the draft room is going to work. Are you able to share with us how that dynamic's going to work between? Mike, Andy, and Mark? So, um, you know, I think overall things will be pretty similar to how we did it before. Obviously, we're going to uh, we've started to tweak the process a little bit. Uh, but I'd say, like every big decision, um, you know, the right people will get in the room. Uh, we'll talk things through and make the right, uh, make a Steelers decision. People say maybe Andy's putting the board together. I mean, is that accurate uh yeah so the way we're doing it the way i'm doing it i'd say that um andy's in charge of putting the, uh, putting the board together that's the way i'm gonna have it and i'm gonna have uh, he's gonna have uh, a lot of influence from uh, uh mark sadowski and dan colbert who were uh, a big part of this and um obviously coach and i are going to be heavily involved and uh you know and we'll uh you know coach art and i will Make sure to make the uh, get together, and make the right decision. Omar, what do you have to do? What does this team have to do to get back in the postseason? Uh, obviously, uh, win some more games. But I'd say that uh, the you know the growth of Kenny Pickett was pretty cool uh, towards the end of the season last year. Uh, just watching him grow, and um, I just think if we continue that momentum, I think uh, good things are in store for us. Omar, when you when you look ahead to free agency, you look at your cap situation, how comfortable are you with where you are right now and what moves you can make to do what you need to do to address the needs on the roster? Uh, I, I think you guys have kind of seen through different seasons what kind of shape we've been. We're obviously in a lot better shape than we've been in the past. There are years where we've been where we've had to get pretty, uh, um, I don't really like to use the word creative, but had to do some things. Um, and. We're, we're, we're comfortable that, you know, if there's the opportunity to improve our team with someone, we, we can make things happen and sign. There's, there's nothing that would be holding us back. So it's more a, signings, more splash this year? I wouldn't say if it's more. Um, you know, I, I just think the opportunity is there to, you know, to, you know, if we want to sign someone, we have the opportunity to sign them. We have the things in this story. It, internally, is uh, Alex Highsmith a significant candidate for an uh, extension this offseason? I, I think you guys know our history. When we have a uh, – uh, a young, up-and-coming player. You know, we, we don't like to let those guys go. Omar, oh, Marvin Leal played a couple of different hats for your defense this year. Uh, sometimes a stand-up edge, sometimes on the D-line. What's his long-term future? Do you expect him to add weight and stay on the line or kind of be an edge uh, 
a depth edge rusher. I think the great thing about uh, the Marvin is his versatility, and uh, we don't we're not going to try to do anything that's going to hinder his versatility. We like that he can go inside, outside, and you know, coach can utilize him in a lot of different places, and I foresee that continuing. Your relationship with Kevin. What's that? Your relationship with Kevin number four. Um, have you leaned on him? I'm not saying leaned, but have you reached out to him? Maybe certain things have come up as a GM now that you. Yeah, you know, we, we text periodically. We were actually texting uh, yesterday about a couple of things. And, um, yeah, we, we talk all the time. I mean, uh, I mean, we text all the time. We stay in communication. I have a lot of respect for Kev. You know, I've learned some great things from Kevin. And, uh, you know, that's that's not going away. Is he coming out? Uh, I'm not sure if he's if, – is he coming out here? I'm not sure. Kevin. Omar, obviously, three picks inside the top yeah. 50, knowing you're obviously not going to give us a strategy or anything like that. But where do you guys – prioritize things when we talked with Artie and said maybe defensively or how do you guys kind of look at that together? I, I would say um, we, we will try to improve uh, every every positional room uh, whenever we can improve it. We'll, we'll do our best to improve it. Obviously there are uh, prioritize, priorities. Um, like I like you said we're not gonna uh, I'm not gonna get into detail but um, I, I'd say uh, yeah, any, any 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 player that's going to uh, improve one of our rooms, we'll, uh, we'll make sure to take a hard look at. Who is this draft strong or weak? You know what? This is a uh, it, it's this is a really good draft. There's a lot of good football players. Um, I'd say uh, I, I'd say overall, it's just good everywhere. I mean, if you if you need a player at regardless of what position it is, uh, without going into detail, I, I think you'll be able to get one. Omar, have you tried to immerse yourself a little bit, get back into more? Uh, so say play personal evaluation, yeah. but just uh, you know personnel awareness. No, oh, absolutely. I mean that's that's uh, kind of consumed a lot more of my time than than before. And unfortunately, uh, we have uh, Cole Marku. Uh, I don't know if you guys how well you guys know, him, but Cole's been with us for a few years, and he's kind of taken the lead on uh, a lot of the cap and the contract negotiation. He, he really does a great job for us. Is that a nice relief? What's that? Is that a relief for you? You know, it's just kind of the, tra I wouldn't say it's a nice relief, it's just sort of been part of the transition. You know, it just naturally happened where it's just, you know, my priorities have to be elsewhere and, uh, um, you know, it's just the way it happened. But, you know, I, I keep close tabs on it. You guys that know me know me. I like to have uh, my hands on a lot of different things. Well, because, uh, speculation that Mitch may or may not be back. What is your view on him and his future with this organization? Uh, Mitch has been awesome since the day he got here. Um, how he's... Uh, been with Kenny's been great, and uh, you know I, w I want Mitch around. One more. Seems like off-ball linebacker has been a tough projection for NFL teams. Just what are your thoughts on the evolution of that position and how NFL teams are scouting it, and getting those guys into the league? Well, like you said, it's a little bit of a projection just because of how the colleges are playing, and uh, depending on what conference you're watching, how they're playing these uh, off-the-ball linebackers. Um, you know, it's a projection, but you trust your about your evaluators and your, your coaches that they they, they see the. Uh, the ability and um, you know we can identify the guys that are actually able to fit into what we want to do. Well, our Mitch is a more expensive backup maybe than you guys have had typically. Is it worth the money to have a guy that's a veteran that's more expensive when you do have a younger starting quarterback? You know we'll, we'll get I don't want to get into contractual uh, details right now you know we're never going to do that but I like I mentioned uh, uh, earlier we, Mitch, Mitch has been great uh, he's been great to have around and to have him around here for a long time. Not only this year, but for a long time. How much do you just value that presence that he has, the veteran leadership? I, I think any young quarterback will tell you having that uh, that veteran presence around him is tremendous, and uh, especially if you have a guy like like Mitch that handles things so well. Are you figuring you have to bring in a third quarterback and think that might be a draft for you? It's a good question, Jerry. Um, I would say um, you know all options are on the table right now. Obviously. We have uh, two under contract. Uh, Mason's a free agent, and um, you know we were, uh, as you guys saw in the playoffs, it's important to have more than two quarterbacks available. You assuming Mason is a ship as well? No, not at all. We, uh, you know, I, we had a great relationship, great, great, good conversation with uh, Mason, and uh, you know the options. The uh, door's still open. Um, when you feel a wide receiver like you did this year, it could signal that you guys feel comfortable with the depth of that position. Is that true? And how do you feel about the depth of quality of that? We, we wouldn't have. Uh, uh, traded Chase if we didn't feel good about that room. We really felt good about the guys that were in that room. If we didn't, we wouldn't have made that trade. How's Calvin Austin coming along? He's good. He's progressing nicely. You know, the uh, the uh, OTAs and the uh, spring ball are going to be big for him to see where he's at, but he's he's coming along. He'll be so ready to play him. in the spring? Yeah. 
Omar, that's, that's our goal. Sorry. Uh, Omar, there's several pit players, at, six pit players at this combine. Yeah. What has been you guys' outlook on the on their draft class, all the guys they have available? It's, it's a strong pit class. Uh, we obviously uh, love those guys being next door. Uh, and, um, you know, there's some good football players, and there, there's, some, uh, there's a handful of guys that are going to be Sunday contributors soon, sooner than later. Has Kenny chimed in at all? What's that? Does Kenny come to your office and give his two cents? Uh, a little bit, a little bit. I'm not going to tell you we haven't picked his brain a little bit, but yeah. I know you don't talk about specific draft players, but when you look at the trend of quarterbacks reuniting with their college wide receivers, and there's a guy like Jordan Addison in this, what is it about the chemistry that carries over from college to the NFL? And do you think that's a trend that maybe you guys could explore? Maybe more teams should could explore in the future when they have that opportunity? I think you always look at look at things like that, but um, you know, given the off seasons that you have and you know the time guys spend together, I think the transition and you know new receivers trying to get acclimated to just quarterbacks, it's it's um, it's, it's not a, a hard process. Is Jordan someone that maybe Kenny comes in and bangs the table or anything like that? And man, I'd love to have that guy back. Uh, I, you guys love to ask Kenny about that, <laughs> but um, you know, Jordan Addison is a really good football player. So we brought up uh, you a successful thing. I mean, you're a starter and you know, one back. Mm -hmm. I mean, what do you look at this a successful draft? Uh, I think time time will tell, but obviously, if I have the opportunity to, to, to draft uh, future Hall of Famers, uh, that that would that would be great. You're not looking for I want one starter. Uh, I mean, we'd like to have we'd like to have all star. You know, right now we have seven picks. We'd like to get seven starters out. Of what if you see a Hall of Famer at say running back? I mean, is it all? Is there a lot of need involved? Or, or what? I, I, you know, running back. You know, we, we have two good running backs that we uh, that we feel really good about. So I think you guys can figure out where uh, how we're going to prioritize that. Position. But I'm just getting at the point of judging a Hall of Famer and judging need. You kind of got to go with need sometimes, don't you? I, yeah, I mean, I, w I would say you, you'd have to go, uh, need, yeah, yep. When you're doing your evaluation, could it be positional or unit? Is there any particular part that you're very excited about? Our team? Yeah. I would say the way that the, the season ended last year, um, I, I'd, I'd say, you know, I'm, I'm excited about the team as a whole. You know, it was nice seeing not only Kenny's progression, but the way the old line came together at the end of the season and their growth. Uh, the running backs, uh, you know, seeing their growth uh, defensively, we saw some really good things. So overall, I just think the team is uh, so excited about the team. How do you One more. Rate that offensive line where early in one was good, late they were very good. Yeah, I wouldn't agree with that about the early in the year necessarily, but uh, just watching their growth um, and just how those guys came together, uh, it was really, really uh, cool to see. It was awesome. Thank you for checking out this content from Post Gazette Sports. If you liked the video, please like it and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you enjoyed it on Apple Podcasts, please rate us five stars on Apple Podcasts. For six months of digital access to post-gazette.com for just $6, click the link down in the description.